Was that a surprise for you? Uh, the, yeah, the parks were, were better than we thought. The EBIT was up 15%, and that's with a, uh, a shift in Easter that, that, that hurt the attendance a bit. Um, and it looks like it's just going to continue from here. And when you looked at um, the ESPN sub declines, that's still sort of the overhang issue. Obviously, we'll talk in a moment about the potential for Disney Plus, but that seems to be already built into the stock to, to a large degree. How should, you, how should, should investors think about the ESPN sub decline issue? Well, first of all, it justifies the company's move to D to C right. uh, as the traditional ecosystem comes under more pressure. And um, we think it's going to continue. We have traditional losses going from 5% to 6% on a year over year basis, going from second to third quarter. Uh, and, and the entire ecosystem, even if you add back the streamers, is probably going to decline in the 3% range. So there's more of that to come. And in terms of your price target for this company now? Uh, we were at 165, but as you said, a lot of it has to do with upside from the D2C businesses. Right. And, and how quickly do you, well, first of all, when do you think you're going to see Disney Plus? Uh, November. No, no, it should be in November. You're absolutely going to see it in November. And absolutely. how long do you think it stays at 699? How important is that for you? I think a while. Um, I th you're right. I mean, just as you saw with Netflix, the price is going to go up over time as the content builds, and it's going to come from a number of different sources. Right. But um, I think they're, they're focused on taking share. They're, they're a little bit late to the game with you know, Netflix and Amazon Prime. But um, I think you're going to see it there for, for, for some time. And just so I understand, do you think that's a 60 million uh, person, a person audience, a 90 million person audience? Oh, at least a 90 million person. At audience. least a million. I mean, audience. we're talking global here, right? right. And, and this content plays extremely well overseas, especially in China, which could be a massive market. They've got to figure out how they're going to enter that market. Uh, Bob Iger made a comment about some of the reports that have uh, been in the press around uh, the future of Hulu and specifically uh, the parent company of this network, Comcast, yeah. um, about whether uh, it's going to effectively divest, whether Comcast would be willing to divest the 30% stake in Hulu that it already owns and what kind of exchange might be on offer. Uh, Iger making a comment that it might uh, there might be some long longer term relationship around programming. So I assume part of the exchange process is going to be around the pricing on some of that other programming. How do you see that playing out? Uh, absolutely. I mean, these companies have a sort of long term relationship in a number of different areas. But I think um, eventually Disney owns 100 percent of this asset. Obviously, uh, at t is selling their their piece. Um, Comcast is right. going to have their own uh, D2C offering, and, and it just makes sense okay, to clean up that relationship. The report this, this, uh, just this quarter is a markup of the valuation of Hulu by some four, almost $5 billion. Do you believe that that valuation is warranted? It's I do. warranted relative to Netflix. My question is long term, and this is the question I think, by the way, if you're Comcast, you're, you have to consider. Do you sell now? If you sell now, you have to effectively assume one of two things either that this entire space is completely overvalued. And or it's just too complicated to deal with this. You don't want to take on the losses and you want to be able to somehow move on. Uh, but on the flip side, if you think that there's actually if, that the valuation is correct today, it, you'd imagine it would only get better in the future, given the amount of money and, and marketing and everything else that Disney's going to have to put behind Hulu. Well, that's right. I mean, I think I think uh, they're going to hold out for the biggest number they can. <laughs> But it, to, to us, it seems like Disney's going to invest. I mean, and I think, I think the, the, the plan, they haven't announced it yet, but I think right. the plan is eventually to go overseas. It's going to require some additional investment. And I'm not sure Comcast is ready to sign well, up Well, hold that. on for the biggest number they can get. Hold on for the next six months for the biggest number they can get or for the next three years for the biggest number they can I don't get. Think it, it could I don't, be double three years from now or, or, you know, or not. Who's got the upper hand in the negotiations? <laughs> and, and is Comcast, would they like to just hold on to it just to be a pain? <laughs> um, Disney? There's no love loss between those companies, right? That, that may be true. I, I think um, it's eventually going to require some additional capital as they try to scale this globally, right. and I think Comcast and, sells and Comcast has right. debt they, yeah. they'd like to. How, uh, what, what's a fair price? What, what, what's a price that you'd say Disney sh should be willing to pay for that 30% stake? I, I think the recent transaction that we saw between uh, AT&T and it, it selling back its stake in Hulu is, is a very reasonable price. Right. Um, and then one of the last issues I wanted to mention is they wrote down, this is Disney, their stake in Vice, which at one point was worth $5.7 billion, now effectively to zero, as if Vice is worth nothing. Right. Right. Does that make sense to you? Uh, a lot of these new media properties are not scaling to the extent they expected, especially from the advertising side. scaling at the point that it's not worth a, a, a dollar? I, I, mean, I mean, George Soros, yeah, put, Soros two, just put, money. put $250 million, but in a debt instrument, which right. means to me that they're sitting around there saying to themselves, maybe this is a zero. And not a convertible. And not a convertible debt, just straight debt. I think, it's, I think it was a straight debt instrument. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But obviously, if something bad happens and right. you get into a really bad situation, then he would be in pole position to own the whole thing. The question is, do you, you, you ascribe any value to that company? 
Uh, we don't. Not certainly not, with, not within within Disney. I mean, like I said, a lot of these media, new media assets have, have been missing numbers. Um, have been shrinking the, their mandates, right. and um, this is just sort of the next step in that process. And so, do you think all of them are going to be in trouble? And by the Hard way, we say. should say, parent company of this network, NBC Universal, we bought into uh, BuzzFeed, right? Just having similar issues. Yeah, Vox, right. Um, Disney had bought into uh, Makers. Yeah. So you think all? You think this whole last decade we've been talking about these companies has been complete waste? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a huge blanket statement, and I, I think there will be some winners, but for the most part, it, it's, they've certainly not grown to the extent right. that, that, that we originally expected.